Did you see the uh, the John Krasinski story? I did. Uh, yeah. So that that was sort of the point of this was Cat had played nine years in Minnesota, um, the only team he'd play for, and now he's leaving. And uh, John Krasinski, who writes for The Athletic but has covered the Timberwolves forever, um, awesome dude, uh, was on a podcast, I guess, um, and told this story. Are we going to play the audio over here? Yeah, it's two minutes. Uh, yeah, but I, thought, it. I thought it was really cool um, just because, like, Cat's been a guy that I've kind of clowned on quite yeah. a bit um, over the years. And I saw this video yesterday and was like, man, that's that's cool. So, yeah, I wanted to play it today. So let's, let's, play this. let's go and play the audio. Tonight he gets traded. We break the news. Uh, 1230 in the morning, I get a text from him checking in. Hey, how's it going? And he knows that my daughter and my son are uh, just huge cat fans. Uh, they, they've met him a few times over the years. I brought him to practice, brought him to a few of his camps and things. He's always been very gracious with them. And he just knows that, you know, my he, my daughter wears number 32 for him. Um, and so he sends a text and I just say, hey, you know, Nita cried herself to sleep. And she did. Like, I I was not worried about breaking the news to anyone besides <laughs> her. And right. she had a hard time with it. Um, and he sends a text back. Well, where are you guys going to be tomorrow? Do they have any sports? And I said, yeah, I mean, Nita has a, has a soccer tournament in Blaine. Um, I said, I'll be there. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> You're not going to be there. Come on now. And so I woke up in the morning and I saw that he put something on Instagram. He was at the practice facility at 3 a.m. So I'm like, it's not coming. So we go out to Blaine, start the game, halftime. He said, text, hey, I'm pulling up. And there he is. He walks out. He has, he's there with his father and four of his friends. And he watches the game. And um, a bunch of other girls from other teams come over. He's very gracious. He talks to them, takes all the pictures, you know, all that stuff talks to my son, tells him he's proud of him for overcoming the things that he's overcome. And uh, then Nita comes over at the end of the game and uh, she's shocked that he's there and he pulls her aside and gives her a big hug, whispers in her ear for a little while. Um, and that just gesture was over the top. Like, you know, he's a, he had to take a plane to, to, to New York on Sunday. His life had been turned completely upside down. And there he was just doing that and... Um, comforting two kids who were hurting a little bit. And I think it helped him feel a little bit of love from everyone and a little bit of a way to say goodbye on a small scale. Uh, but that's the kind of cat that I knew. And so um, when I saw people make fun of him, when I said it, it just, it, it, it always kind of irked me because I just knew the heart underneath all of the other stuff. Um, Go ahead. That's amazing. I Years ago, maybe 14 years ago, 15, I was in Philadelphia uh, for NBA.com, and I was uh, covering a Sixers-Thunder game. Kevin Durant was on the Thunder. And uh, a guy I knew came up to me and goes, hey, Lang, I want to introduce you to this high school kid. He's like a ninth grader. He's here as a media member covering this game, and he's going to interview Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's agreed to do an interview. And the high school kid was Carl Anthony Towns. Mm -hmm. And he was – 15 years old and he came over and gets, he was a big slam reader. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was from slam. I don't remember why I was there. He comes over and gets introduced to me and like, could not have been nicer. was polite. Great. Asking him questions. Uh, and I know I actually randomly weirdly, I know his aunt. I've known her for a long time. Um, that family has been through a lot. You know, remember cat lost his mother to, uh, COVID when all that was going on. Um, and then, to have only one home in the NBA for the last decade and then kind of surprisingly get traded yeah. at the last minute. Like, I don't think he, he didn't ask for a trade. It just right. happened. Um, I think like there was a real connection to that city and those fans for cat. Mm -hmm. And we don't know, you don't always hear these type of stories like this about these guys, but like, that was such a great story to hear. Yeah. Like, like I said, I've always kind of clowned on the guy. Um, just for, you for clown whatever on reason, uh, like, I think he's kind of a silly and a, dude. And think that this is a good thing. Yeah, I, I just I thought that was really cool that um, that he did that. Um, and he's clearly like been a big part of that community. And just as someone who's a fan of a small market team, yeah. uh, like that's just that's always cool to see when one of the guys has a connection with that specific city. Um, yeah. Cause you want that with, with these guys, like with the yeah. Grizzlies, like you want them to want to be here because they, they feel they like this is place. home. Yeah. So uh, that, that was cool to see. Your I, son's not old enough yet. I, don't, I, I guess to have like those connections with those, with the athletes yet. Right. I mean, he loves jaw, right? Yeah. yeah. So does my son. And like, 
you know, we've been through it the last few years when you when like when yeah. I got suspended and I had to explain what's yeah. going on and you know and and sometimes you you realize your heroes aren't perfect. Yeah, you know, and yeah. you and you go hey, he through loves Jaron too. The kids love Jaron. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jaron's awesome too. Like you know, it's I don't know being a parent and being a sport. We talked about being a sports fan again, but like it's all part of this whole thing and. Sometimes we blame these guys, we vilify them, we curse at them, all that stuff. Right. But they're just dudes. That's you know? very true. They're just people. That's and very true. They make mistakes, and they're great also sometimes. And Cat doing that, showing up to a kid's soccer game and talking to everybody and everything on his way out of town, like mm-hmm. that's unbelievable. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah, for sure. Good on him. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m.